Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. If you have not seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job uh, is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, far away in Westboro. Um, but my fun job is this, um, in, in, who, which is really talking about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to one of my presentations, seen one of my seminars, you know that Frank and Mary have a very simple goal in life. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's North, bro, that means they want to be staying right here, like forever. They don't want to go to move to San Diego with their kids. They don't want to leave. They want to be here. And so the point of this show is to let you know the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about if you want to do exactly that, if you just want to stay here. So with me is my wonderful co-host, Liz Tridiak, who, who started uh, in the Senior Center right at the beginning of COVID. It's like the first anniversary of COVID, you know, it's like it a year. Um, but it but it has done this great job of actually meeting a whole lot of people. You know, you've got, you know, that come through the events at the senior center, you know, as well as online. And she finds these great people for us to talk to. She's got some wonderful guests today. So Liz, whom do we have? Today, Arthur, we have Kevin Donahue with us, and he is the um, outreach, community outreach um, coordinator for the Worcester County District Attorney's Office. So Kevin, welcome to our show. Welcome to Frank and Mary. Well, thank you. We so really happy to have you here. Yes. Pleasure to be here. I want to thank you and uh, Alfred for inviting me on the show today. Not a problem. We actually had a great conversation earlier, Arthur. Um, so you mentioned how I had started right before the pandemic. Kevin also started just a couple months before the pandemic started in his role. So Kevin, why don't you tell us about how you got to be where you are now? Okay. Uh, basically, I was an uh, elementary school teacher for 35 years. I worked in Spencer East Brookfield. I taught um, third grade for 25 years, and I was a pre-K to fourth grade teacher uh, for phys ed for my last 10 years. So I looked at my last 10 years, I got to play out my career, so to speak, because <laughs> uh, I've always been a guy that likes to stay active. Uh, but once I retired, I, like I said, I, I knew I wanted to still be involved. So I, I applied for a part-time position for a job with the district attorney's office. And um, district attorney early thought I'd be a good fit for his community outreach program. So I got hired in January of 2020 uh, for the community outreach program. And I began training for what they thought would be a lot of um, in-person presentations. And then COVID struck. So the idea of in-person presentations was gone. So it was a big learning curve for me, just as well as everyone else, where how are we going to reach out to our seniors and keep them informed if we can't be in person with them? And so uh, the DA's office has um, a subscription with Zoom. And so I started doing uh, Zoom presentations. And uh, basically, you know, there is a disconnect with some seniors with technology. So it, it has been difficult as far as that goes. Um, but I've been like, this is how I got in contact with Liz. Um, I've been reaching out to all the senior center directors and council and agent directors that are in Worcester County. And um, I've been basically just um, talking to them to find out what services are still being offered to the seniors and um, how the seniors have been doing with the vaccination process. and. Um, a lot of seniors were, I mean, senior directors were echoing the same thing. They had a big concern about the vaccinations because mm -hmm. it, it was just a very a difficult task for the seniors to be able to do. But with the new mass website that's out there, they find it much easier. A lot of senior center directors now have a few people helping them to register the seniors for the vaccine. So right. uh, there's hope that, you know, we're... Basically, through this pandemic, like uh, I saw that you said in one of your shows, oh, well, you know, we just got to grin and bear a few more months and hopefully we get back to uh, normal. And mm -hmm. by normal, I don't mean masks are all gone. We'll probably still be wearing our masks. But it would be nice to just be able to go outside to be with our family, be with our friends, go back to the senior center and be able to converse. You know, <laughs> I think that's a big thing that's missing. Kevin, I love that you did your homework and watched a few Frank and Marys. Before right. 
<laughs> we can also send you a complimentary box set, you know, of like the best shows <laughs> like last year. If you, if you, just let us know. Let us know. Oh, my goodness. So, Kevin, we've been talking a lot over the past couple of weeks. And one of the main topics we've been talking about is fraud and scams that's um, happening in our senior population. And before we came on the air just now, I was telling um, Arthur and Kevin how here at the Northborough Senior Center, I know personally two folks who come here often who've fallen victim to different scams on the computer and on the telephone. And the Northborough Police Department has been fantastic. But these people are nervous to even say that they've fallen for a scam. They're embarrassed about it. So, Kevin, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the different scams that are going on and why people should speak up about what's happening to them. All right. uh, before I even talk about the different scams, I just want to touch upon what you said about being embarrassed. Uh, you know, people have to realize there's, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean, it, it, can happen, it can happen to me, it could happen to Arthur, it could happen to you. I mean, in, in a split decision, we make the wrong choice. We click on a link in a text message or in an email. You know, it appears to come from a, a company that we normally do business with and we think it's real and we click on it. Next thing you know, it's asking us for our personal identifying information and we're sharing this information. I mean, it can happen. Uh, like I said, there's nothing to be embarrassed about, but if it does happen to you, I think the most important thing to realize is share that information. I mean, call the, your local police department, let them know. Because most police departments put out, you know, they put out their own uh, public broadcast to share with people to let them know the scam is in our area. Share it with the FTC. Share it with your senior director in Northborough. Share it with Liz. Share it with, you know, your your friends, your relatives, just so they don't fall prey to the same scam. Like I was telling you earlier, I don't know how many people are familiar with um, Shock Tank, but Barbara Kakorin, who's on Shock Tank. She lost almost $400,000 in an email scam. Someone sent her an email, told her that they were one of the builders that um, was working on one of her projects, I believe that was in Germany, redoing apartments or whatever. She just sent that money right out. And then um, last week, um, Attorney General Maura Haley uh, received a phone call from an imposter scam. This person was posing as someone working for a utility company and he was contacting her because of an overdue bill. And if she didn't make payment immediately, power is going to be shut down. And but what Maura Haley did was she went right to social media. She shared this with everyone so everyone would be aware of it. She put it on the state website. The best thing we can do is share this information. If we know it, if it's happened to us, or if it almost happened, someone contacted us. Just get the information out there so it doesn't happen to someone else. And, you know, before I touch upon any particular scam, I mean, there's a lot of red flags. Someone contacts you, you're going to pay them with uh, uh, gift cards or they want a wire transfer. Why? Because those are the hardest to trace in reverse. Okay. Or someone contacts you out of the blue like, and they, they tell you they're from the IRS, you owe back taxes, but they need your personal identifying information. The IRS is never going to call you. They're not going to text you. They're not going to email you. The only way they're ever going to contact you is through the United States Postal Service. So we don't have to worry about, you know, that type of scam. Another red flag, uh, you know, like I said, someone they're calling you. They're asking you for money. Or you get a robocall. You hear a robocall. It's an automated service. Because many people say, I don't know what a robocall is. If you pick up the phone, it's an automated recording. That's a robocall. Now, some robocalls are legal. But most of them are. Most of these robocalls we're receiving are illegal calls, and they want you to click on a link because as soon as you press a number, they know they have a live number. And at that point, they, they're going, you're going to get more robocalls, and it's never going to end for you. And like the National Do Not Call Registry, people will tell you to put your number in it. But if you do, it doesn't mean robocalls are going to go away. Someone's already breaking the law. They're going to continue to break the law. I just, uh, with that, I'm going to stop. District Attorney uh, Early just popped on, so I just want to welcome Joe. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kevin. And, Ke and, and by the way, Ke Hi. this guy is really good. 
Gerald. This, <laughs> oh, was, he's tremendous. You hired the right great. kind of guy. This is just a terrific in terms of really being a wonderful spokesman for this for the stuff that you really want to be focusing on. Yeah, you know, and it's sad. Uh, the uh, we had a case just last week where a woman uh, fell for the grandmother scam, where she uh, got a call saying it was her. And he knew the guy knew everything. It was her uh, grandson. You need, you need to bring some money over. Don't tell mom and dad I get arrested. Bring it over to a certain address. We think they probably watched her when she went to the um, FedEx um, place. They gave her a very specific place for the FedEx on uh, on a street in Worcester. And then they gave her a very specific address to FedEx to deliver it. We, we think there was no one home there. And when it was delivered... Um, then the police got involved and did a great job trying to stop it. But FedEx couldn't get the, the message from the, they got the message sent to the delivery driver, but he didn't see it in time. The package was delivered and she was out eight grand. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It, it just never stops. It's, it's so awful. sad. That's why with Kevin making everyone aware of these problems is a great thing to do. And he does a great job with it. We're lucky to have him. No, and, and I think he was really emphasizing that, 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 that the, the key, if you're a senior and something happens to you, you want to report it. You know, you, of course, you're embarrassed about this thing. And, and it may be that you won't get your money back, you know, probably. But you're helping your community. You're helping the people around you by reporting it. You know, you, you really are. You're saving someone else from becoming prey to one of these scams. Um, look, it's embarrassing. As we get older in life, we get forgetful. We don't want to admit to anyone that, hey, we, we might have just gotten taken advantage of. But you've got to do it. You, you've got to do it because you're saving, potentially saving someone else from falling prey to these scammers, and they're good at what they do. So we have to be smarter than them. Right, right. You know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm just dealing with a client. I do, I do work around here and also on the islands, on the vineyard in, in Nantucket. And I, I'm literally going down to have somebody sign a power of attorney, like Thursday, right? Because if they were yeah. introduced to me by, by, by some friends down there. And and somebody took advantage of them, and she's out two hundred thousand dollars. She, you know, they they got the information off of her, you know, from a and it was a standard. Oh, you know, there's something wrong with your bank, and we really need this information. And what are your account numbers again? You know, and and, and but I think go, and going back to something that Kevin said, you know, it's about if you don't know them, you know, watch out. It's just call like, our office. Give us a call. You know, we'll we'll let you know. And, and I think that that's an but that's an important addition to this conversation because I think you would know you would think I'm going to call my local police right you don't necessarily think about calling the DA's office right no and, and Kevin's a great guy to reach out to and we can let you know right away the other thing is ask them for their phone number to call back um, they're not going to give you their phone number they're not going to give you a number you know if they say they're from the IRS or the sheriff's office they're not going to give you a number to call back. Right. And as people get up in age, they, you know, they're worried about losing control of some of the aspects of their life. They want to remain in their home. They don't want to admit to a grandson or a granddaughter that they got taken. And we had a, a detective in Auburn did a great job. A woman on a romance scam lost 164000 but he was able to secure 64000 of it before it got dispersed. And so she was out 100 but. She was able to save 64th. The detective in Auburn was able to save 64,000 of it. All right. Just to elaborate a little further on uh, the romance scam, uh, that uh, romance scam took place in North Carolina. It was a 78 year old woman who um, fell uh, victim to a person who friend requested her on Facebook. Basically, he said he was in the military. He said he was 56 years old. He said he was going through a divorce and he was stationed overseas. Uh, this 78-year-old woman had been married twice. Her first husband she got a divorce from, second husband was deceased. Now, she's been in quarantine from COVID all this time. And she's, you know, running out of, there's not many people that she's in contact with on a daily basis. She accepts his friend request. They're talking several times a day. It goes from a few minutes a day to a few hours a day. And before you know it, he's asking her for money. He's asking her for money uh, so he can fly to see her. He's asking her for money for cow repairs, um, for surgery for himself or for, for uh, his daughter. She ends up wire transferring and gift cards sending him that money. But she also sends money, a uh, $64,000 check, to um, a, in a cashier's check to him 
which he deposits in a bank in Auburn. Well, her daughter finds out about the scam. She contacts the Auburn police. She gets a hold of a detective, Detective Keith Chipman. And this is where, you know, I found this story because I had Detective Chipman in third grade. I don't know how many years ago. I, I don't want to age myself or age him, but a long time ago. And Arthur, you're on mute. You're on mute, Arthur. I just want to say, so about five years ago, you had him in third grade. Right? About five years ago. Probably maybe closer to three or four. I'm not yep. sure. Well, anyways, um, he did his due diligence. He got a freeze on that account, and she was able to get that $64,000 back. She's still out over $100,000 that she did do through gift cards and wire transfers. You know, social media, I just want to, isn't a place where we want to make friends. If someone friend requests you, I mean, if you don't know who that person is, you don't want to accept it. People can be anyone they want to be. They take a picture of someone, they, they use that as their profile picture, and they put it on. This gentleman said he was 56 years old. He was really only in his 20s. He had never been in the military. He had never been divorced. But this woman believed his story, and that's why she accepted his friend request. Now, the pandemic's almost over. We're all going to be able to see our family and friends again. We're going to be able to go to the senior center. They're going to be able to see Liz. They're going to be able to see all their friends and maybe new friends. And that's the place where you want to, you know, make new connections. Not someone who's reaching out to you on social media. There are too many scammers are taking advantage of the situation right now. There's a lot of confusion going on and they're running with it. And with that, they, the biggest population they're taking advantage of is our seniors because they know our seniors, many of them have a little bit of nest egg and they're getting their social security benefits and maybe a pension paid into them. So there's some money that they can go after. Be diligent, make it through this pandemic. We're gonna we're gonna be fine. Great advice. And if anybody out there has any questions, we're awfully tech savvy here at the senior center. You might not expect it, but we are. So if you have a strange pop up on your computer or you have a friend request from someone that looks familiar, but you're not sure, you can call us and just have a friendly conversation about it. You don't have to make a formal report of a scam or anything that you might be um, suspicious of, but we can talk you through it before it rises to the next level. So don't be afraid to just reach out and talk to us about anything that seems a little off. We're here to help. That's a, and that's a great point, Liz, you know, cause, cause of course, if I'm a senior, I'm a little bit nervous about this, you know, I don't want the police coming to my house. God, I don't want the DA coming to my house, you know? So I, I may be very concerned about this, but to have them at least, you know, to know that they can call you and just talk to you, about who might be the best person to talk to. And maybe you do want to talk to the police. Maybe you do want to talk to the DA. Just to kind of, just to give, to give somebody to have kind of a filter, you know, or, or people who say, you know, I don't, I think I got, maybe I didn't get scammed, but I'm a little nervous just to have somebody to talk to. Cause I think that's one of the problems now. I think, I think Kevin, you know, really gets to the heart of it. People have been isolated and feel isolated. And there isn't that kind of normal circle of people that you could kind of bounce things off of, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's really an excellent point. It is a great point, Liz. And you guys are right there. Just, hey, Liz, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. You know, of course. So can I can I ask, you know, one, I know we're getting a little close on time, but can I ask one question? We're getting close to the to what was supposed to be the end of tax season, because I know the returns was supposed to be filed by April 15th. I think that now got pushed back. But are there are there any particular scams that you that tend to show up right about now? Yes. About yes. Time? Yes. Kevin, I'll turn it over to you. But the IRS is it, they, they claim to be the IRS all the time. The IRS has your Social Security number. They're not going to call you and ask you for it. Kevin, go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, I, basically, I've shared information with uh, the DA's communications and we have posted that on social media. I mean, basically, it's, it's like Joe just said, you know, they're contacting you, they're telling you they're from the IRS. Uh, first of all, they might be telling you that uh, you either, you didn't pay enough in your taxes and you owe more money and they want you to, that red flag I told you about earlier, they want you to wire transfer them the money. Okay, and remember what I also said, the IRS is not gonna contact you by phone. It's only gonna be through the United States Postal Service. So if you get a phone call and anyone's saying they're from the IRS, you know it's a scam. They're not going to call you by phone. But Hang up. <laughs> unfortunately, 
this uh, the uh, tax scam is going to last a whole month longer now. <laughs> I mean, we wanted, you know, many people wanted an extension, but this extension gives scammers more opportunity to try to scam people out of their money. Very good. They're very hard 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 money. I mean, a lot of your listeners are very sharp. Just hang, ask them for a number and tell them you'll call them right back. Yeah, I mean, scammers follow the headline. They know that now it's, you know, like I said, tax deadlines up to May 17th. And with that said, I mean, you know, the worst thing is, is you get a notification from the IRS that a tax return has already been filed in your name. Now, that letter most likely might not be a scam. And that's because what um, scammers do is they try to file the tax return before you file it and right. they try to get the refund. And then when you file, it's kicking yours out, even though yours is legit, because one has already been filed in your behalf. And, and, and by the way, some, I'm just going to mention something you just said, Joe, that you just mentioned. I'd never thought about that. It's just probably the best advice initially that you, if, if you want to just get them off the line, just say, look, you know, I'm, I'm really busy right now. Give me your number. I'll call you back because they're never going to you tell me they're never going to give you a number. Right. No. And that's the real tip off. They're not going to give you a number. And it, and it gets them off the line. They give you a number. We usually can find out who they are unless right. it's what they call a burner phone. Yeah. And then, you know, give give the number to uh, to your niece, your nephew, uh, uh, or at the senior center, or call the DA's office with the number and we'll pass it on to the police. Right, right. That's terrific, that's terrific advice. That's terrific advice. Well, listen, thank, thank you so much for, for coming on. This was really great. I think this was really useful information. And I know that we'll have, you know, the folks here at, at, at Northbrook Cable are terrific. Dana, our producer, is great. So, you know, any kind of information that you want on, you know, whether it's a, as a as a as like a bar as we're talking or at the end of the show, you know, we're happy to put it on. Right. Yeah. And it's just really useful. But in, 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 in Liz, it's great to have these folks on and for them to know, for any of our viewers to know that if they, you know, first of all, these two guys look like pretty friendly guys. You know, they're not like these big, you know, hot shot, blah, 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 you know, they're not going to come with handcuffs. But also that that, you know, if they're really worried about it, they can talk to you. They can talk to you. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, working for the D.A., I can tell you, Joe is a true advocate for our seniors. And, you know, just working underneath him just makes me realize, like, he, he really cares and like that this job is important. Like, Joe believes it's important to be proactive rather than reactive. And that's a result of him starting all these programs, such as the community outreach programs. Thanks, Kevin. But I, before they happen. I got into this business because of my father. And the, the, when you're in politics, it's a noble profession if you're helping people. It's a, and and that, uh, that's such a wonderful note to end on. It's a noble profession. It's a noble profession because you can do a lot. You know, so many people think, oh, my God, they're all, blah, 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 you know. But it's like, <laughs> it's about, you know. It's not. <laughs> but, but it's, you know, it's about this. The, the essence of this is helping people, and so that's why we really, you know, we really appreciate both of you being on. Uh, and that's why. And thank I, you so I much. Just, oh, appreciate you having us on the show today. Thank Kevin you. Kevin was a teacher before this. He likes teaching. <laughs> All right. But, but I've gone from one extreme to the other. Is what I said. I was. Um, <laughs> thank you. Freaking Liz, good to see you. To see you. Thank, thank you very you. much for coming on. And Kevin, we'll have you here when we're open in person. All right, thank you, Liz. Uh, I think you can do a regular the lecture on the on the Council on Aging circuit here. So thank you, folks. Thank you very much for coming, Liz. Thanks a million once again for getting these great thank guests, you. folks. We hope you really enjoyed that. The information is available. Talk to the DA. Talk to Liz. When in doubt, as they've told you, listen. I can't talk to you right now. Give me a number. I'll call you back. Right. That'll, that'll tell you how legit these folks are. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northrop. Thank you very much. Thank you.